everyone, welcome to another episode of the Buckle Bomb Show here on BMP Sports. I'm your host, Bobby. I'm so happy to be here to talk professional wrestling with you once again on a Thursday night. I am joined, as always, by my broadcast partner, dancing his way to your screen like Lita going to save Becky Lynch in a cage, Anthony Rowe. Tony, how you doing, buddy? Well, in the business, we call that a callback, but nothing can affect me right now, baby, because the Eagles are Super Bowl bound. And if you didn't see, both the Street Profits and Ricochet both predict that they're going to win. So I'm going to take them at face value with their word. Go, Birds. All right. Uh, I don't know if I can get behind the Go, Birds, but I'm not a big Kansas City fan either. So, yeah, whatever. It's kind of a meh Super Bowl for me. All right. Listen, everything's going to be a mass Super Bowl for you. You guys are, you're like the Rob Schneider character from The Water Boy. We suck again. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see what quarterback we get. If if you don't know, you can see behind me. I'm a big Bucks fan. Uh, we'll see what happens now that Tom Brady's gone. But uh, certainly wasn't a great year this year. But we still have a hell of a lot of talent on that team. We'll just need to get a quarterback to put it together. All right, let's go ahead and jump into some wrestling. Unfortunately, the last few weeks we've had to start off with some sad news, and we're doing it once again. This time, though, it looks like we might get a happier ending. Uh, You've probably heard by now, a couple of days ago, Jerry the King Lawler here in Florida, down in Fort Myers, had a serious, a massive stroke outside of his home. He was apparently found unconscious face first uh in the parking lot of his condo uh but he seems to be doing better as of now he does have some speech issues and uh some uh cognitive issues but he's doing okay apparently it's expected that he'll make a full recovery i'll go ahead and pop on directly wrong thing Directly on to Jerry Lawler's Twitter page here, where we've been getting a couple of updates. This is the most recent one, as of four hours ago. Jerry is out of the ICU, which is fantastic news, and will return to his Florida home for outpatient rehab for his limited speech and cognitive skills. Doctors hopeful for a full recovery, and Jerry is looking forward to returning to his fans very soon. Uh... Tony, and here's a few pictures of him in the hospital from yesterday. Tony, what do you uh, what do you make of this? Or, you know, I, I'm not. That's kind of the wrong question. But uh, what are your thoughts and feelings on Jerry the King Lawler having a stroke? I, it's unfortunate that it happened to Jerry. He's always going to be a legend in the business. Um, unfortunately, though, this is just one of those things, especially. Let's not take like lose sight of, you know, Jerry Lawler is in that age range where these things tend to happen more frequently. Um, keep in mind, it can happen anytime. So, you know, doctor's appointments regularly for all of our viewers. But um, even regardless, it, it's sad and unfortunate. And even though they say that he's going to make a full recovery, you always have to wonder, you know, is it going to be full in terms of medically full or is it going to be full full in terms of wwe standards for what they want on camera full um you know are are we ever going to see lawler again uh if we never see lawler again i'm fine with that just as long as his health is up to snuff agreed if 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 i know jerry lawler and i don't but uh, just based on how people talk about him and how he is in public, if I know Lawler, this ain't going to stop him even from getting in the ring. Even if WWE doesn't put him on TV again. And he was very, very occasional. Uh, he was really mostly doing some of the post shows and pre shows for premium live events and occasionally getting on uh, to, to commentate a match here and there. But. Uh, <laughs> He'll get back in the ring. I don't think there's any doubt about that. If he can move, he'll be in a ring pile driving someone. That's just Jerry Lawler. But uh, I do love these uh, pictures here with longtime uh, friend and and manager Jimmy Jimmy Hart. Obviously, they go all the way back to Memphis together. Jimmy Hart. Obviously, Jerry's the king of Memphis, and Jimmy Hart got his start in the business in Memphis. Obviously, he started as a 
musician and lived in Memphis and got into wrestling from there through the Memphis territory. So good seeing them together, you know, looking through old photos and old pictures in these, uh, in this Twitter post, look at an old, uh, an old Memphis uh, card there. That's, that's pretty cool. And it looks like Jerry's going to make a full recovery here. Hopefully he does. Uh, yeah, regardless of whether he gets back on TV or not, it's just it's just good to this time we're getting some good news uh, coming out of a bad situation. All right, we'll go ahead and move on to our next topic here. Uh, we'll talk some wrestling. We'll talk Roman Reigns versus Sami Zayn was officially announced for Elimination Chamber in Montreal one week from Saturday on the 18th. Uh, we got this after Sami Zayn attacked Roman Reigns from behind and challenged Roman Reigns to the match before the bloodline came in. Uh, great stuff. Another great segment between what seems to be the end of the bloodline and, and Sami Zayn. Great, great stuff here. How How much are you looking forward to this match? Even though... We know Roman Reigns isn't losing the titles, but are you still looking forward to this match? Let me put it that way. Uh, Man, I'm concerned about this match. The only reason why I'm concerned about this match is I want to see where this is heading in the future because despite Cody being the number one contender at WrestleMania, this match alone isn't going to blow off what took two years to build. Or at least you would hope not, at least. Um, regardless, I am excited for this match, but I'm just taking everything with a grain of salt right now until we actually get through the match and see what happens. I see where you're coming from that with that. I have been thinking about this a lot. I don't know. This This might upset a few people. So let me try and explain this. I don't know if right now, even even at WrestleMania, I don't know if it would be the right time to put the belt, the world title, on Sami Zayn. I'd love to see it happen. I want it to happen eventually. But I want it to be right. And I don't know if you have enough of a come-from-behind run here. He was a heel... And then he was part of a heel faction, even though he was getting this great buzz and this fantastic story behind him. And now the fans are solidly behind him. And I think it's the right move. It's his hometown to have this championship match. I don't think there's any doubt that that's the right move. Uh, I would I would, I would, would love to see it. And obviously we got a whole Cody Rhodes situation happening. So yeah, how long is he going to have a run with a title? But at the same time, we also know eventually... As much as I don't want them to, they're going to split the titles up again. We're going to have two different world championships. That's just an inevitability because the two networks want a championship for each show. So whenever that happens, I I think it's very easy to see Sami Zayn get there. But I want a little bit more of him losing, getting pushed down, losing, getting pushed down, and getting that come on. At some point, he's got to... You know, he just keeps getting that sympathy and keep getting that baby face. Man, at some point, this guy's going to get over. I think you can keep building that. I don't think we're at peak Sami Zayn baby face yet. I think we we can go even further with this. And I don't think he should win the belt until we get there. Um, I I know that might be hard to imagine because he's he's the best thing going on the show right now. But I think we can go even further with it. And you still got Cody Rhodes, who obviously, and we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, with his promo with Paul Heyman. I mean, that's starting to get to a level where it's up there with Sami Zayn. So I think think you could push Sami Zayn even more, get more sympathy and even more people behind him, even stronger, get, get almost a yes movement kind of feel behind him which was a whole nother level from this if you remember so you know if they do it right 
we got to put that caveat, especially with the WWE. If they do it right, we can go even further with Sami Zayn. And I think putting the belt on him right now would actually hamper that a little bit. So, any response to that? No, I absolutely agree with you on that. Uh, just for the simple fact that, um, well, let me rephrase that because I don't agree 100%. I think we're a very long ways off from Sami Zayn being yes level appreciated by wwe fans excuse me um i actually unfortunately don't see sammy ever holding a wwe heavyweight championship i think he's going to go into the hall of fame as uh scott hall of sorts one of the greatest professional wrestlers of all time never would win the wwe championship kurt henning roddy piper the list goes on and on of wrestlers who should have at one point or another been WWE champion, never has. And I unfortunately envision that being Sammy's fate. I don't think so. I think he'll get one and I think he'll get one this year, maybe even, or perhaps next year at WrestleMania. Uh, again, especially if done right, you can get and WWE if done right. That's a big if we know that you can get to that that yes movement, Daniel Bryan kind of popularity with Sami Zayn. I really think you could. But you have to nurture it right, and it has to be organic, which all of this has been pretty organic so far, and they've been good at nurturing that rather than trying to force it. So, and I actually think they're doing a good job of going, hey, wait a minute, let's not go too far. We did that with Kofi Kingston. He got popular all of a sudden. We threw the title on him at WrestleMania, and then he had a lackluster run as champion. And there are certainly some booking things in there that you can you can say this or that, but the fact of the matter is, to a certain degree, once he got that belt, the story was kind of over, and we saw him make we saw him win the belt. Yay, story over. And it just kind of sputtered from there. And you don't want to make you want to make sure that doesn't happen with Sami Zayn. And I think I think hopefully under Triple H we can make that happen. All right, we'll go ahead and move right on. We're moving along here. We're going to talk about uh, first off. We got a couple of promos we're going to talk about. One on Dynamite, uh, but and I didn't make a graphic for it, so we're just going to kind of split this section up into two parts. But I wanted to talk about the Cody Rhodes Paul Heyman promo on raw and just how fantastic this was i'm actually going to throw it to you first and then i'll follow up with you but what what did you feel about this uh emotional promo between uh Rhodes and Heyman? i mean let's just cut it right to the chase with it was there a more gut-wrenching line uttered in professional wrestling in the last 10 years i i mean for me it's i'm sorry i love you you were Dusty's favorite, but Roman was the kid Dusty always wanted. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 those two right there, there, there's no going above and beyond it. Um, and, and Paul, Cody, Paul you know, being, the, being so good and so gracious the entire time, you're, you're his, you were his favorite son. But then showing his glee at saying that same line, being just making that turn. All of a sudden, he's the Paul Heyman we all hate. But Roman Reigns was the son he always wanted. And just, ugh. Yeah, brilliant stuff. But continue. And Cody being the consummate professional, he is, you know, going up and you, you want every fiber in your being for Cody to just trounce the clown from Spawn into hell. But you don't get that. Instead, you get the handshake that made Heyman soil himself by his look when Cody got up on him like that. Yeah, you can see it right there. Uh, just, just good stuff, and it kind of, and you can tell that was all real too. Like the emotion before that, they're both in tears, and you could tell a lot of that that was real stuff they were talking about. They were getting really emotional, and not to say that. They went out there completely off the cuff and just started talking about 
this stuff. It was obviously planned out, but you know, being able to use that emotion out there and to sell it, and boy, did they sell it! And it was excellent, great, great stuff from Cody Rhodes and Paul Heyman here. Uh, I don't know that there's anyone better on the mic than Paul Heyman in the entire business right now, and Cody Rhodes just. I mean, he's he's up there with the best of them. So, uh, anything else you want to add to uh, Heyman and Rhodes here? I, I mean, what else could we really add to it? The story itself is taking shape. Yeah. And this is the one thing I love about having Paul Heyman as the mouthpiece for any heel. Because Roman Reigns is currently in two different feuds, and they're all being built to a pinnacle of sorts, but Roman Reigns hasn't had to interact with Cody just yet. The interaction you want to see more of as it is, is Paul running his mouth on behalf of Roman to get Cody so fired up that Cody is going to whip the living hell out of Roman at WrestleMania. Yeah. That's just how perfect of a character Paul E. Dangerous is. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So the other promo we wanted to talk about, and I had already made all these graphics ahead of time before I didn't get to check out Dynamite last night. But uh, Tony had sent me this a couple hours before we did the show, before we're recording here. The MJF promo in the back before, uh, or excuse me, after his match with Takeshita. And, <laughs> wow. Uh, this is kind of a, where the other promo was just so brilliantly, uh, the one on Raw that we were just talking about, so brilliant in its emotional gravitas, and it built up and built up, and then you get that turn from Heyman, and then you get the emotion, you get the you get the the fire from Cody. This was just over the top bad guy here. Admitting to some really bad shit and making some obscene gestures like, wow, this was, this was brilliant in its own way, obviously in a bit of a more, a more mature way. This is not TV PG. What does that uh, hand gesture mean, Bobby? It means sucking on a lollipop, right? Isn't that what he's doing? He's talking about when he was young, so... I thought it was like he enjoyed summer sausage. (laughs) But, uh, I mean, this was just the whole story with a Liv, which, of course, made everyone think Liv Morgan. So there is that little bit of a thing, too. Which, obviously, the girl he described was not Liv. But, ugh. So you got multiple layers here, and then he just goes and and he... the story makes a turn where obviously, you know, he switched seats with the girl and, uh, just some heinous, a heinous, fantastic promo by MJF. I, I don't know any other way to describe it. Check it out if you haven't seen it from Dynamite last night. Uh, and then, of course, this morning on Twitter. Uh, or last night, actually, after the show, he posted a picture of the Camaro that he's talking about with him, a young him next to it. Uh, wow. Uh, what, did, what did you think of this promo? Well, I woke up uh, this morning, and when I was doing my morning routine before I went to work, keep in mind, I didn't watch Dynamite last night either. So I see the picture of MJF with the Camaro completely out of context, I go to the comment section, somebody asks what this is, and I just see a bunch of gifs of Liv Morgan sucking on a lollipop. Yeah, yeah, that's down here too. There's <laughs> it, it kind of explodes in yep. her mouth. Right there, it explodes out. It's yep. like some sort of wet lollipop, and she kind of giggles and it's I saw it too, and I suddenly forgot about MJF, let's just put it that way. But <laughs> So I was like, all right, so maybe Liv and MJF hooked up or something, or people found out about it, whatever. So then as I'm at work this evening, I uh, stumble through my stories on Instagram, 
and I see a link to the promo, the MJF promo that has some Hall of Famers saying that MJF is putting himself in a Katie Vick like situation. And so I watched it. Obviously, not a Katie Vick like situation. A hell of a promo by MJF showing yet again why he is the ultimate bad guy in professional wrestling right now. I don't think there's anybody that's above him and just being an absolute piece of shit. Um, Then you start wondering the legitimacy of the story. Uh, Would you say that uh, the police in New York received over 300 phone calls reporting the crime? Yeah, that was a that was a tweet that I'd seen, and I don't know the veracity of it, but that Nassau County Police uh, fielded over three hundred calls, and that they had to put out a statement saying, "We'll look into it, but we believe this was just a fictitious story and a fictitious TV show." So, nuts stuff. It's always great when when someone like MJF or the NWO or whatever it may be. You just go, oh my god, I know all this is fake, but that's real. I gotta call the cops on that. (laughs) So, and then you have Brian Alvarez come out and report that 80% of the story actually happened. And when you first read the headline, you're like, I wonder which 80% of it is real. (laughs) And it turns out that MJF was involved in a really bad car accident with his Camaro years ago. Hit a tree, totaled the car out. Um, except he wasn't getting a blow job, but well, hey, blow pop, blow pop to anybody else's knowledge, uh, unless he swings for the same team because the I'm person saying. that was let's, in the car with him. Let's not assume anything. Yeah, let's not assume anything. But he seems pretty interested in the females. Uh, you know, Ali Catch will tell you something about that if you ever follow her Twitter on a Wednesday night. Um, but it was his teammate who was the passenger. They hit a bunch of trees one night while MJF was hot dogging. So, uh, unfortunately no prom, no rain, no live. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, all right. We'll go ahead and move on from MJF getting a little road happy to the Gun Club becoming AEW Tag Team Champions last night on Dynamite on a Championship Fight Night. This was a match we a lot of us kind of predicted that maybe the Gun Club would come away with a win here, but if they would, it would be because Billy Gunn turned on the acclaimed. And they teased that. But then it didn't happen. Billy Gunn stayed with the acclaimed. But the Gun Club got the victory anyway. I actually like that. It's a little bit playing into the hands of, you know, the social media and the people trying to predict things. And, okay, let's let's do something to swerve them here. AEW gets accused of that. And I could see why people might think that after this match. But... Still, I, I like the match. I like the way it was put together. And I like the fact that the Gun Club, they're a really good tag team. And they've got a bright future. I really do believe that. And I, I like to see them with the belts here. What did you think of this? So, um, first off, I think it was awesome. Um, but I don't know if you realize that this is playing into a much larger storyline. Hmm. Um. The gun club still hold a win over FTR. Oh, is that what you're thinking about? So, their win to technically qualify to be in the spot was over FTR. They beat FTR. Last night after the match, Austin Gunn posted a picture on Twitter of himself and Colton, both of their own individual bottles of that tequila that you always see Dax pictured with. And uh, I believe it was a little over four hours ago, Dax Harwood put on Twitter, damn, y'all, I can't believe this. I think I really miss wrestling. I saw that. So uh, this is just, you know, unfortunately, you don't want to make the acclaimed look weak. And Gun Club could be your sacrificial lambs. 
put the titles on Gun Club for a little bit and have FTR come back and you can finish that feud up nicely and go into a program with the acclaimed and FTR or the acclaimed FTR and the Young Bucks, unless you listen to the FTR podcast this week, then that might not ever happen again. But uh, yeah, I, I think this is setting up for FTR to take over the AEW Tag Team Championships. So you think there are a little bit more of a transitional tag team champions here? I can see that um, they're still very young. This gets them a little bit of legitimacy under the belt while still, okay, it's not their time to actually go on a run yet, but let's let them carry the belt, see how they look with it, get the fans with that image in their mind, and build them up even more. I, 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 I like that way of thinking, and I can also see that because right now, as we know, FTR's contracts are coming up relatively soon. And we know they're going to have interest from both companies. And this may be a way... Just to say they go to one of the big two. But they might, sure, you know, they, they might float around for a little bit. Who knows? But this would be... then, And especially with AEW doing house shows now. I mean, that's going to play into this. But that could be a way of saying, hey, dangle that hook in front of them. We've got a story here that we could do and we could put the belts on you, you know, pretty much right away as soon as you come back because you guys deserve a run with the belts and we'll, we'll have an entire 2023 as good a run as you had with all the other belts in 2022. Let's set up a run for you in 2023 within AEW with the AEW championships. And I think that would be one hell of a hook to get uh, Dax and Cash back in AEW. So I, I can see where you're going with that. And But to go back to the gun club, you know, obviously, we, we just mentioned FTR, best tag team in the world right now. I don't think there's really any denying that, uh, uh, you know, unless you want to throw the Usos in there. Uh, you know, arguably they're one A and one B. I think right now, and you could flip flop wherever's and whoever's where. But then you got you know the acclaimed are a hell of a tag team, and obviously they've had a run with the AEW belts, um, and they're very popular right now. But as far as other tag teams and up and coming tag teams, I've heard a lot of vets, people out of the business, people on interviews, and. Uh, people on podcasts throw out, hey, watch watch the gun club. And maybe there's a little bit of, I don't know if nepotism is the right word, but hey, we, we're friends with Billy, and these are his sons, so let's... But it, it does seem to be a bit of, hey, watch out for these guys. They're young. They're really incredibly talented. We like their stuff, and they've got a future ahead of them. Where do you see the Gun Club in their future? What do you think of them right now and their talent? So um, the first time I was exposed to Austin was during the buy-in for All In. And during that match, you could tell Austin was his father's son. Um, He was solid in the ring. uh, Just the way he was able to connect with the audience during that match and be a big key player and all that the little uh, face-to-face he had with his dad during the match. It was all really cool. Then Colton came onto the scene relatively out of nowhere. Um, He just ended up being on Dynamite one week. But he, too, he has has the skill set. So I think it's exactly where you're at where, yes, they are transitional champions, but it's to plant the seeds. Mm -hmm. Because one day in the very near future, you may be Sands- an FTR, you may be Sands, a Young Bucks, you may be Sands, the Lucha Brothers, and you're going to need tag teams to step up to the plate, like what they're hoping is going to happen with Gun Club, with Top Flight, um, potentially what they have going on right now with Action Andretti and Ricky Starks. So to have guys deep in the cut waiting for their chance isn't necessarily a bad thing for them. You don't think Jericho Housen makes the cut? You know, I wish it would because the pictures of that were just... Right. I saw the entrance. It, it literally 
Dan Housen's almost cracking up. He's he's looking over at Chris, and Chris tries to do a thing, and and Dan Housen's like, no, no, it, you're okay. You're not doing it right. But all right, <laughs> like real Dan came out for a minute and was like, all right, this is crazy. But all right, <laughs> let me go off on something real quick. Okay, by the way, fuck the Jericho Cruise, and here's why. It provides too much of an opportunity for us to see professional wrestlers without makeup on. And I should never, ever, 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 ever believe a day in my life that Dan Housen goes one day, even on a cruise ship, without wearing the Dan Housen makeup. Because he was so good for so long about blocking out his face. Leave it up to Chris Jericho and Dan Housen's wife to fucking screw the pooch on that one. And now I know he looks like every regular you, hipster that What are you talking H-Man. about? Dan Housen went on Conan O'Brien. And talked about his gimmick was, with no uh, a couple of years ago. I did not see this. I'll send you the link later on. It's on. It's on YouTube. It's been there. That was kind of how he got his first big moment. Was hey Conan O'Brien? Let's check. Let's check this guy out. It was. <laughs> <laughs> and he talked about his Dan Housen gimmick. This is obviously long before he was with AEW. This is when he was with Ring of Honor. But yeah, what? And you could you could imagine Conan O'Brien. He's telling about the teeth. And things like this, and yeah. Conan O'Brien going, what? you know, <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, all right. We'll go ahead and move on from the gun club and talk about Lita. Lita, Amy Dumas, making her surprising return on Raw. We finally got the Bailey Becky Lynch cage match that we were supposed to get at Raw is Triple X. But timing issues, they had to just cut to the chase and get the heat. We got that cage match this week on Raw. Uh, at the end of it, obviously damage control preventing Becky Lynch from escaping the cage, even though it looked like she had the win. Uh, then out comes all right, Lita's music hits. Out she comes. She starts dancing, pulling a Jeff Hardy. As she's out there running out to save Becky Lynch, who's getting pummeled. Well, she wasn't getting pummeled in that particular... Well, actually, she was. She was in danger of getting hit by a by a crutch. But uh, she came out there. She hit Bailey with the, the cage door and helped Becky Lynch get the win over Bailey in this cage match. Are you excited to see Lita back in WWE heading up to uh, what we could assume is some sort of WrestleMania match between... Lita, Becky Lynch, and Damage Control? You know, it's weird that everyone's emo or goth chick crush phase didn't come till later on in life. Because after the uh, live intercourse celebration between her and Edge, that's why I knew that Lita was my my type. It's um, too bad CM Punk, CM Punk got there before you, huh? Man. I can't climb any mountain CM Punk ever climbed that. No, thank you. <laughs> oh. Which sucks because, you know, not to get too far off topic, but if you look at CM Punk's hit list, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we all know, we all know he's a talker. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> what a difference nine months makes. Anyway. Um yeah. Lita coming back is awesome. I I feel like she has a couple more runs left in her, maybe, or at least I'd like to hope she does. Um she is definitely on whatever Jeff Hardy was on during his AEW debut. That just dance around. I, I understand this is your first time back. You want to take it all in. But, I mean, you're there to make the save. Uh, that's a rough option there. I don't know. Uh, you guys, I'm sure if you're if you're this far into the show, you heard the introduction and you heard me introduce Tony today as, you know, dancing his way to your screens like Lita. That was a callback to the very first episode. Go look back. Our very first show. And it looked very different. As proud as I uh, as I was of the look of the show at the time, I'm like, oh my god, this looks great. It looks disgustingly terrible, and Tony's audio is horrible, and 
a whole thing. But literally, one of the first words out of my mouth, because Jeff Hardy had just debuted on AEW TV that week, and I say, dancing his dancing his way to your screens like Jeff Hardy running in to save his brother. <laughs> So, I, I don't know. I, I just literally, and because obviously with the Lita Hardy connection, and she did a twist of fate on Raw on Monday. So, it was just, it just popped right into my mind. I gotta, I gotta make that reference. <laughs> just let, just, just know if I ever need you to save me from something and I see you dancing towards me to make the save like that, as soon as. As the gang knuckle fuck that I'm getting in a corner somewhere is over, when I come back to, my goal in life is then to beat your ass with the same kind of tenacity that I just got mine beat with. <laughs> <laughs> just Bobby coming over. Got you, bro. Got you. <laughs> got you. Let, 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 me, let me get the fans to cheer me on first. I can't get down there if they're not cheering me. I, I need the power of the, of the fans to get me to the ring first. Listen, if it's not at least a Road Warriors pop, I'm not coming. <laughs> oh, music hits, I run out, and it's just crickets. Uh, I'm just going to the back. Screw my friend. All right. All right. Uh, we all love seeing Lita. We always love to see Lita. And it's WrestleMania, so we're going to get some of these legends and some of these big stars. Uh, I, I do want to... This is a cornet ism uh, but I want to get your opinion on it, and then I'll give you mine. But there's, I think there's some truth in it, but, but let's, let's say what, what Cornette always asserts is that we don't have a lot of stars in wrestling. So that when we do get a star, when we do get a CM Punk, when we do get a Stone Cold Steve Austin, when we do get some of these guys, some of these old timers, whatever that are legitimate box office stars, a John Cena comes back, whatever. It, it, they overshadow even who they're in the ring with and who they're supposed to be putting over because they're just so much bigger and so much more popular than the quote-unquote stars of today. Do you see any truth to that? Do you think the stars of today are just as big as the stars of... Lita's era or do you think man it's just it's hard do you think it's just the fact that quite frankly a lot of these wrestlers don't have the training some of the old timers did when they still had a little bit of a territory system what 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 do you think it is or do you agree with uh Cornette's assertion at all no I think Car Cornette's a dummy no, no star of today has that kind of power to make a pop happen when they return from something. Uh, if I recall, after a certain pay per view that got mauled for something else, the unveil of MJF being the casino chip ladder blackjack twenty one champion chip case winner was MJF. That was one of the loudest pops of all time. And if I'm not mistaken, was that not in Chicago? It was. And he rivaled the pop CM Punk got when he returned to wrestling for the first time in seven years. So Cornette's assumption on that is completely asinine. Uh, did Cody Rhodes not receive one of the biggest pops ever when he returned to WrestleMania? I think Sincerely, the only difference, and this is a strictly WWE system problem, is the stars of today aren't allowed to get themselves over the way the stars of yesteryear were able to. Uh, what I mean by that is, to an extent, it was all on the wrestler, the superstar of the 80s and early 90s to get themselves over. Nowadays... Perfect example of this is Matt Cardona, Zack Ryder. Uh, WWE had nothing for him. They didn't really care if they ever had something for him. Uh, so he starts his own YouTube show. He was the first wrestler at the time to do that. And he got himself insanely over online to the point where WWE didn't have a choice but to address it. And some say that really ruined his career. 
with WWE at the time. So I, I think that there's... It put him over, I think, for a minute because he became U.S. champion. And you had... It was it was a fun... It, there's that great picture from 2012 where Zack Ryder's U.S. champ... I forget who was IC champ. And you had Daniel Bryan was World Heavyweight Champion. CM Punk was the WWE Champion. And it was just this fun picture of all these sort of indie stars that had made it big at WWE and were all holding titles and was sort of a changing of the guard or at least was meant to be for WWE and we were all looking at Zack Ryder as hey he could he could carry one of the bigger belts maybe in a few years but instead he's getting paralyzed by Kane and screwed over by Melina and and he was John dead. Cena stealing his girlfriend yeah he was dead after that so but um, yeah. It's, uh, I, now, don't get me wrong. I think that is also changing with WWE. I agree. But um, I I think to an extent there is a possibility of the older star overshadowing the newer stars, and that is something that you always run the risk of happening when you bring back something old that was beloved that people haven't seen in a while. However, if professional wrestling is aimed more towards a certain demographic, let's say 12 to 19, right? Mm. That 12 to 19 year old isn't going to really be familiar with Lita's work outside of the video games. Sure. So, and if by what your logic is from what we've talked about in the show in the past, if that is truly what wrestling demographics, what it's aimed towards demographically, then Lita shouldn't really be that much of a factor in this match at all. Then, I mean, is she's going to be another body in there. People are going to know she's special for one reason or the other. But if it's anything like that, then it's not going to be a factor. Well, one of the one of the fun things about wrestling, and and this is where I think you to a certain degree have been right and I've been wrong is when whenever you have, especially in AEW, a wrestler that is not known or is only known in like an AJ Styles and TNA. And yeah, he got that big Royal Rumble pop, but you know, sure. Okay, great. But how much is he going to be really known by the audience? Well, the fact is, we have YouTube and we have the internet now. And if a WWE fan doesn't know who AJ Styles is, but they do hear that Royal Rumble pop and they he gets a big moment and the announcers go nuts, they're gonna go looking for him. It was the same thing. Let's let's take a shift into the movies and the MCU, the big Marvel movies. And in twenty twelve we had this great event movie called The Avengers where all the Marvel superheroes that had gotten movies before, plus a couple of others, all came together and defeated Loki. And it was great. But then there was a tag at the very end for this deep dive, deep cut character that only comic fans were going to know called Thanos. But because of that tag, people that didn't know him, like me, I never read a Marvel comic in my life. Well, I read a couple, but not. I had no idea who Thanos was. But by the time 2018 came out, or 2018 came and we got Infinity War, everyone knew who Thanos was going into that movie. So there was that thing where, hey, I don't know who this guy is. Let me look him up. Because we have that ability today, today at least a lot easier than we would have... You know, you you had to sign up for tape trading and you had to do this and that. Now, I don't know who's who's Ibushi. Well, let me go look up his DDT stuff. Oh, no, don't look up that. But, <laughs> oh, no, I don't want to see him anymore. But, you know, you, you have that ability. Or, hey, I, that that's funny. That's great. Uh, yeah, I want to see him do this to each his own and whatever they may think. But they can go back and look at that and see who that guy is and see his history. And they go, yeah, I want to see that. Yeah, now I'm happy to see that. Now I'm cheering for that guy. You know what I mean? And I think there is a little bit of that where 
And certainly the younger generation, you know, if you're sitting at home, you're 13 years old, you have maybe have heard of Lita, but you don't really know her. But you're watching it with your dad, and he gets really excited. Well, now I'm going to go on the WWE Network or on Peacock, and I'm going to look her stuff up and go, oh, yeah, Lita's awesome. She's got a thong sticking out. I want to see more of this girl. So, <laughs> so you know, yeah, of course. It, there's there's all this stuff, and, and there's so much stuff about wrestling where, you know... Well, you always have to evolve. I think Cody said something on Impulsive. I don't know if you've watched that. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, by the way, Prime. Uh, that interview with Cody Rhodes that he did on the Impulsive, uh, Paul Logan on his podcast. And Cody said something. He was giving advice to, to Paul Logan. He's like, you're going to come across these people. And you could tell he was specifically talking about Cornette. He's like, oh, you're going you're gonna to come across these people, these old-timers that were great, and they made a lot of money, and they were over, and they were, they were great at what they did. But they think that's now the only way you can make money, and it's just not true. It, it, wrestling has to evolve. It has to move forward. And I do think that I, I think there are some constants with storytelling and structure of story and things like that, but that doesn't mean new ideas can't be brought forth, and they should be brought forth, and... Just because I don't like it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm right or that that's how everyone should feel. It just means I don't like it. So, you know, fuck Cornette for him thinking that everyone should like wrestling the way he likes wrestling. Let's put it that way. Can I just point out, <laughs> did you, do you really just call the, this man that we've been watching wrestle since SummerSlam? No, uh, WrestleMania two years ago at this point. Did you just call the man Paul Logan twice in a row? I think I did, yeah. <laughs> I'll blame the, uh, what I'm drinking here, the alcohol. Logan right. Paul, I apologize. <laughs> I, I knew the name of his podcast, so. You did. About that? You did. That's probably why I said L- impulsive, Paul Logan. Nope, looking Paul. We're, you we're not that old. We're keeping our uh, fingers on the pulse of what the cool kids are watching. Right, exactly, exactly. You know, whenever someone that we care about is actually in it, I've seen two of his podcasts. It was Triple H and it was Cody Rose. But you know, they had enough of these hanging around the set that I had to go get one and check it out. So hey, it worked. All right, we'll go ahead and move on to our next topic our last topic uh, main topic that we'll be talking about tonight on nxt bailey showed up on nxt and she did an episode of her piper's pit talk show ding dong hello and had toxic attraction on there and (laughs) we probably should have seen this set up a million miles away and there's been some talk obviously especially ever since mandy rose got fired of the breakup between J.C. Jane and Gigi Dolan. But it finally happened on the set of Ding Dong Hello in the ring. We had this great moment. The interview segment was over. Everyone's raising hands and congratulating each other. And then, a la the Rockers and Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty, all of a sudden... A super kick out of nowhere from J.C. Jane to G.G. Dolan and then throwing her. I think it was meant to be through the door, but it was just into. That door did not give one bit. That looked rough. But J.C. Jane throwing uh, G.G. Dolan into that door set. And we've got now a baby face, I would imagine, G.G. Dolan with the heel J.C. Jane and a broken up toxic attraction. What did you think of this segment? What did you think of the obvious, with Shawn Michaels in control of NXT, the obvious allusions to the Barbershop episode where the Rockers broke up? And uh, what do you think of the future of both J.C. Jane and Gigi Dolan? So, the second I saw this uh, segment, I-, I became the embodiment of the Leonardo DiCaprio meme where he's, uh, I- I've seen this before. Um, <laughs> I get that. You Sean Michaels. Yeah. You know Sean Michaels has fingerprints all over it. 
Um, the segment as a whole, not shocking. Uh, well played, but not shocking. We knew this was coming for a while. Um, unfortunately, I think JC Jane's going to end up being the uh, Marty Janetti in this situation. I was going to ask who do you who do you think is going to be the Marty and who do you think is going to be the Sean? Just because that's the thing everyone's going to be asking. It's such a parallel for the way they the way the segment went. I don't think there's going to be a Marty to that degree. I think both of these talents have big futures. But then again, you know, you never know. So, but but let's let's go there. Obviously, they're going to feud here for a little bit. And then I would imagine one or both of them will get brought up to the main roster. Do you think the WWE has their eye on one of these women as, hey, that's that's the girl we want. That's the girl we're looking at. Is it JC? Is it Gigi? Is it both of them? Is it neither of them? Are they just doing an angle in NXT? What, what do you think? Do you think the WWE has one of these girls in mind for a big push, a big in the future on the on the main roster. I mean, I'm sure they're all going to get their push, but uh, I'm telling you right now, it's uh fantasy Booker hat for a second here, but JC Jane's getting the look to get called up to be the uh, next member in damage control, which is the way that I, I see this going. Obviously Bailey right there. Yeah. That's yeah. maybe not a bad way. That would be a good post WrestleMania you know, here's your NXT debut, JC Jane. Yeah, I can see that. But uh, yeah, I, I, like you said, hopefully they both have storied, legendary careers. I mean, you know, I'm a big fan of Gigi Dolan from the Priscilla Kelly days, and those are kind of hard to watch. <laughs> <laughs> you get a tampon, and you get a tampon, yeah. and everybody gets a tampon. I I don't know that reference, and I don't know that I want to. So yeah, that was uh, that's interesting. I I I just thought, oh, Bailey's just there, but obviously, if you're bringing Bailey to an NXT taping, she would be there for a specific reason. Hey, here's that her and JC Jane, because JC's obviously the heel in this situation, turning on Gigi. You have that bit of. And Bailey was shocked, and she was on the couch, and she didn't take any part of it. Where maybe she was impressed by JC Jane, and you could start to bring that up. And obviously, I don't think she has any part to play in WrestleMania. But I, I like where you're going with that. You bring her up onto the Raw after Mania. That'd be a great debut, I think. All right. We'll go ahead and move on to our quick jabs. I don't have any myself, but I know you've got a couple, Tony. So uh, let's uh, throw out your quick jabs out there. All right. So my first quick jab. Um, the forbidden door to WWE is potentially open. Uh, you, Maybe. You say this every week. <laughs> so it's been reported that NXT star Ivy Nile is going to be appearing for Booker T's reality of wrestling event. Um, as previously stated by Brian Alvarez on F4W online, that this is going to, the NXT was allegedly going to allow NXT stars to start taking select indie bookings. Uh, unfortunately, Shawn Michaels had to piss in everybody's Cheerios when he said that this is a one shot deal. Now it's being reported yet again that select bookings may be coming to the main roster in exchange for some monetary fee or talent that exceeds the level of talent that they sent is what the report was saying originally. And now it appears just like before, this is a one shot deal. Where are they going with this, Bobby? Where do you think this is ever going to go? Do you ever think it's going to be NXT talent? that's going to be allowed to take indie bookings or do you think that it's just uh, kind of fodder? Well, I can see, I can see the WWE at some point saying, "Okay, 
you know what? We, you're independent contractors, and there's all this talk about, you know, a union. How about how about this? If you get if, if you have an opportunity for a booking elsewhere, come to us with it. We'll approve or deny it, but if we approve it, we get a certain percentage, maybe, or there would have to be some sort of this or that, or maybe some sort of deal. The deal would have to be with WWE and that promotion rather than directly with that performer and the promotion. So I could see them saying, because they, if if it's going to be with one of their performers, they're going to want to have some sort of advantage from it. And if it's not going to be a creative advantage, it's going to have to be a financial advantage. So what is WWE going to get out of it? That's how you have to look at it. And I think I, I can see them going, okay. And it, it would, it, this is going to help us subsidize some of our, uh, our roster, our payroll, our roster payroll. This is going to help us subsidize some of it. We'll go ahead and allow on a case-by-case basis a few independent bookings here and there with certain promotions that we have a good relationship with a GCW or this or that. And at some point in the future, I can see something like that happening. I, it, it's something that might be getting talked about and that may be where these rumors are coming from, but I don't ever see the door becoming wide open with WWE. So, cause my thought process was this, I don't know if you heard this last Friday, they were discussing that uh, WWE and now AAA is being reported to having a very friendly relationship. Um, they actually had WWE camera crews in the house when Dragon Lee announced that he signed with WWE. Right. And the theory behind that is is WWE is trying to get real close with all these indie promotions that AEW used to have uh, a relationship with, but for one reason or another, their relationship fell through. Uh, so I thought that was kind of interesting at first, but if it ever happens, I think it would have to be NXT level. I, I couldn't see him pulling down the main roster. And I, I would also say that this is probably stuff that's happening. And obviously all this stuff is going to have to get approved by not even necessarily Triple H. He's just in charge of creative. This would be a, a Nick Khan now Vince McMahon thing that would have to be approved and we know Vince's history but I can see where Nick Khan would be like hey there's maybe an opportunity here there's always this talk about unions and unionization with the wrestlers and we obviously don't want that to happen and there's this uh, last week tonight with John Oliver piece that's still online and still does really good numbers even two years, three years later, how three years it was put out, 2019, so almost four years now. Yeah. And it still does good numbers on YouTube and people still talk about it. I, yeah, I, I can, I can see whether here's, here's a way to alleviate some of that pressure from both the public and from the boys and girls in the locker room of, hey, we're, why can't we take other bookings? We're independent contractors. So, yeah, I, you know, on a case-by-case basis, I can see at some point them going, hey, let's do this, especially as Vince McMahon gets further and further out of the picture. All right. Yeah, I can, I can get on board with that. All right. What, uh, what's your next quick jab? Well, since we're going to be staying on the uh, bridge of the Forbidden Door being open, yesterday the following announcement was made regarding Impact and New Japan Pro Wrestling joint show for the WrestleMania 39 weekend in Los Angeles. Impact Wrestling and New Japan will co-produce a major live pay-per-view pro wrestling show on Thursday night, March 30th, at the Globe Theater in Los Angeles with megastars from both promotions in action. This show is going to be called Multiverse United, Only the Strong Survive. It will be on pay-per-view and fight TV starting at 8 p.m. That is, I believe, 
Yeah, it's the Thursday of before WrestleMania. So this is, you said New Japan and and Impact. Yep. Interesting. The Multiverse United, only the strong survive. And what what date is the battle in the valley? Let me look that up. Because I believe that's the ninth, or not the ninth, uh, the first. Because those are two events for New Japan in the same area, very close together. Uh, yeah, but that's GCW though. They'll run. I, I believe they ran. 10 shows the year they were here in the Bay for uh, WrestleMania. They were running like two, three shows a day during that weekend. Oh, shoot. Okay. It's still, it's still very close, but it's, it's not as close. Battle in the Valley is the same day as Elimination Chamber. Oh, okay. It's February 18th. This has never happened to me before waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning to watch a Japanese pay-per-view before I have to watch another it, one that night. It can't be It can't <laughs> be that night because it's in San Jose, So because it's in California. That's, that's right. That's the battle in the valley. That's why I thought it was closer to Mania. But, uh... Interesting. 6 p.m. Bell, first bell is at 7 p.m. Oh. So they'll they'll literally be competing with Elimination Chamber. That's interesting. Hmm. Yeah. But uh I think if anybody's really doing anything for this whole forbidden door concept right now, it's gotta be New Japan, right? They have their friendly relationship with WWE, their relationship with AEW, with the Forbidden Door 2 pay-per-view that's going to be later this year. And now they're working with Impact. I mean, if they uh, they clear up that beef they had with AAA, or my apologies, CMLL, then, uh, gosh, they might be the real Thanos of professional wrestling. All right, moving on to the next one. Former WWE star claims that he was almost Kane's brother, Abel. Uh, during an interview with Chris Van Vliet this week, Matt Morgan, some of you may remember him from TNA as the blueprint or the DNA of TNA. Um, Matt Morgan discussed the idea when he was in OVW developmental in 2004 that he was going to be Kane's brother, Abel, and have his own mask. Uh, that would be the opposite of Kane's, but similar as I, he described it. And uh, to bring up a point, Bobby, you talked about before the show, thinking that this was a Cornet deal. Yeah. Here's a direct quote from Matt Morgan. Johnny Ace and Stephanie wanted me to wear a mask to work on my, to wear a mask and to work on my body language, right? And so I remember Cornette just being like, what? What are you doing? He's like our baby face champion. That also sounds like Cornette, yes. <laughs> so there's your corny connection for you. Yeah. I knew it was at the time of Cornette. I just, and I knew I, Cornette back then loved Glenn Jacobs and, and Kane. So I could see him going, oh, wait, this, this guy... You know, maybe should play a brother to Kane or something like that. Or I could see him coming up with that idea. But at the same time, at, also at that point, Cornette was in charge of OVW. And even though it was a farm system for WWE, he was very much, hey, I don't care what you want to do up there. This is, a, I've got these dates and I've got this story I'm trying to tell on my programming in Ovi Ohio Valley Wrestling. You want my baby face champion to suddenly put on a mat? What is this? I he he I absolutely would do that. So, uh. yeah, that'd be a uh, interesting to think about now, knowing <laughs> Matt Morgan's political aspirations here in the state of Florida right now. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. 
Well, this uh, this next quick jab is for all the video game lovers. It's official. The ASRB has made a final decision on the AEW Fight Forever video game, and that rating is T14. And here is the summary. This is a wrestling game in which players compete in matches with wrestlers from the AEW roster. Players use punches, kicks, and grappling maneuvers to drain their opponent's health. In some match types, example, barbed wire, stadium stampede, or unsanctioned, players can use barbed wire, baseball bats, metal chairs, and Molotov cocktails against opponents, eventually resulting in submission and or knockouts. Blood splatter effects can occur during match, standing the mats. Video footage of real matches also depict blood on the wrestlers' faces and cleavage, or faces and bodies. The game contain, contains some mildly suggestive material. Female wrestlers in revealing outfits, i.e. deep cleavage, bunny outfits, and partially exposed buttocks. Wrestlers performing taunting gestures, i.e. cross chops and slapping buttocks. Real footage sometimes depicts wrestlers drinking alcohol and smoking. The word shit is heard in the game. These were all reasons why they had such a hard time getting it from M to T. According to rumor. And it was according to rumor, but it was this, denied this by AEW, by it. the way. But yeah. It Well, this is a direct statement from ESRB themselves. So Yeah. Well that that's why it was that and yeah, certainly you can see they where they may have had a a, a hard time getting it T. You definitely don't want it to be M, especially if you've put all this money into it. Um, so if it is true, and that would be why that's the rumored reason why the game has been delayed yet again. It was supposed to come out this month, and it's not. We still don't even have an official release date. So now that's been now. Now here's the thing. That rating would have been known a few weeks before this statement's actually gone out. So I would imagine we should be getting a release date very soon. Maybe they, now that it's coming up so close to the release of WWE 2K23, maybe they don't want to directly compete with that, so they might push it off a little bit longer. Um, just so they're not competing with it, we'll we'll see. I don't know. Uh, what do you, what do you think of that? Because I I don't know if you necessarily want two wrestling games, even though they're opposite companies and they're competing companies. You don't want the video games to come out at the same time. Yeah, and but I think at the same time, maybe AEW can have control of that more because it sounds like Kenny Omega and the Bucks are heavily involved in the creation of this. So, man, that's, I, I don't think it's up to the individual wrestling companies themselves to come up with the release dates is what I'm trying to get. No, that's, that's up to the publisher. Yeah, that's up to the publisher. So I don't think if it wasn't for the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega having such close ties with the creation of this, maybe they would be able to prevent that. But at the same time, I think the publisher is just trying to get their money back right now. So they'll just drop it whenever they want to drop well, it. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. The uh, publisher is going to be trying. They're the ones that are going to be yeah. in marketing going, when's the best time to release this? Maybe we shouldn't release it this close to 2K23 because now we're splitting the market. Whereas if we release it a couple of months later, if we release it in the summer, uh, now we're a few months removed from 2K23 and there have been a lot of critics of the 2K series with WWE and if that game falls flat in its face or is just more of the same then now we've got this alternative out there and you know if it gets good reviews now it's going to sell like pancakes rather than trying to release it at the same time and compete directly so I, I could see where they might be thinking that way but I don't know this is just starting to get a real uh, Duke Nukem Forever vibe. <laughs> All right. Any other quick jabs? All right. I got two left. Okay. All right. Uh, during an appearance recently on Sportsnet, The Undertaker had revealed what he said to Bray Wyatt during the Raw 30th anniversary special. He said, and I quote, I just let him know 
too, that my phone's always on. If he needs to talk to me about anything or run things by me, that's cool. I would be more than glad to share my experience with him and hopefully shine some light on questions that he has moving forward. It was a cool moment and it did exactly what I thought it would do. So Undertaker letting us in a little bit there without having to acquire the services of a lip reader, as Bobby once suggested. <laughs> um, Bobby, what are your thoughts on the passing of the torch now? We know exactly what this was. Well, I still think the moment was there in the ring, and, and you don't need to know exactly what was said between them. And obviously, that wasn't more of that was probably said behind the scenes and back in the locker room than what was actually said there on camera. But I do think, you know, obviously that's great news, and I'm sure. Mark Calloway has said that to a lot of the talent uh, beyond just Bray Wyatt. Because from everything we hear, that's the kind of guy Mark Calloway is. If you come up to him and you ask him for advice, he's going to give it. And he's going to help you out if he can. So there's nothing surprising there for me. Um, As far as the moment itself on Raw is Triple X. It's... Still a great moment, a fun moment, especially if you're a fan of Bray Wyatt, which I've had my issues with this return and and some of his character work, but it it was still a good moment. Obviously seeing Taker back as the American badass version, uh, a lot of us loved. A few people criticized, but uh, I think for the most part was well-received, so... It doesn't change my thoughts one way or the other about that, but I, uh, it's always good to hear. Absolutely. And the final quick jab I have holds no bearing in the world of Bobby whatsoever. Uh, for like-minded wrestling fans like myself in the Florida area, April 22nd, 2023 GCW will be running a show in none other than Orlando, Florida. Are you going to try and drag me out to this thing? I mean, possibly we'll talk about it later, but just like, could you imagine the content I will get of your face in complete and total utter cornet disgust <laughs> the entire time? <laughs> Oh, uh, well, I mean, that'd be great because then, like Corny, I could make a killing selling shirts of me making a face on my, uh, on the shirt. There you go. Maybe strike up a partnership with GCW afterwards and have them sell it at shows. <laughs> hey, hey, yeah, I'm down for that. Absolutely. It worked for the iPod guy. <laughs> All right. Do we have any announced matches for that card? Uh, we do not because tickets don't. This is kind of like a secret of show that nobody knew about. It just got randomly announced this week. Uh, tickets go on sale tomorrow, Friday. Uh, I was kind of hesitant on whether or not I should tell you heathens about tickets because, you know, me and Bobby aren't having the best of luck recently with tickets, it seems. Yeah. <laughs> Freaking NWA. Um, yeah. But yeah. Nothing announced yet. Um, rumored is uh, Jonathan Gresham is going to be on this card, and so is Speedball Mike Bailey. Uh, it has been confirmed on whether or not that's going to be a match or if they're just on the same card. Okay. All right. Well, hey, if you're down to go, I'm, d- I'm always down to go to some wrestling and see some wrestling live, no matter what the company is. Uh, I just don't want any glass tubes in my face, but, you know, to each his own. There will be blood. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Uh, Anything else? Was that the last one? You said two more, right? So that is the last one, buddy. That is the last one. All right. I don't have anything for quick jabs. Tony covered all that for us. So uh, that'll do it for this show. And it was a good one. I really enjoyed talking about everything we had to talk about this week. Tony, love you so much, man. Check out. Love you, brother. uh, Check out. Hopefully Tuesday next week, 
probably a Thursday again. The way our schedules are going, we'll ha- we'll see. Just keep an eye on uh, BMP Sports for us. So see you next week, guys. The preceding announcement has been paid for by Bomb Media Productions.